Let's read. He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribe. Uh -huh. Continue. And I wish you would have given us the NLT, but it's okay. Egypt was glad when they departed for the fear of the Lord, for the fear of them had fallen upon them. Mm -hmm. The Lord spread a crowd above them as a covering and gave them a great fire to write the darkness. They asked for meat and he sent them quail. He satisfied their hunger with manna, bread from heaven. Let's continue. Spread open a lock and the water gushed out to form a liver through the dry wasteland. Praise be to God. That lock is still the same. That lock which was gushing out water, it is here with us. Amen. Mwamba ukonasi hata asubuhi ya leo. Na bado unatoa maji. Bado kuna mana kutoka binguni. Kwa kanisa la Yesu Kristu. Na kwa hivyo nataka utayarishe moyo wako. Bwana anaenda kutuletea neno lake. Mwambie Bwana ninahitaji kutoka kwako. Fungua kinywa chako. Zungumza na Bwana. Mwambie Bwana ninahitaji hayo mana mapya kutoka binguni. I need that fresh manna from above. I need that water from the lock katika jina la Yesu ili uweze Bwana kusatisfy moyo wangu katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Zungumza tu na Bwana. Mwambie Bwana, ninahitaji kutoka kwako. Wewe haujabadilika. You are the same yesterday, today and forever. The way you satisfied the church in the desert, vile ulivyowashibisha wana wa Israeli, hata leo Bwana unashibisha kanisha lako, hata kiu tulio nayo. Bwana kuna maji, kuna mto ambao Bwana Unaweza kutoa na utautoa kwetu kwa maana tuko na kiu tuko na chauku ya kutoka kwako bwana tushibishe mfalme mwema 
atushibishe tujaze na roho wako katika jina la Yesu shibisha nafsi zetu shibisha mioyo yetu twatamani kusikia kutoka kwako twatamani kujazwa na wewe roho mtakatifu wa Bwana chukua usukani nena nasi nena nasi Bwana nena nasi mfalme wa amani nena nasi nena na mioyo yetu haujabadilika ni wewe jana leo na hata milele you can do the same lord you can do the same for us may you have your way lord may you have your way this morning amen 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 Can you help me to invite Reverend Joan Reverend Joan so that she may come and uh, invite our preacher of the day why don't you appreciate her in the name of Jesus thank you thank you Joan God bless you saints indeed this morning it's my joy and pleasure to be here let us pray our father and our god in the mighty wonderful name matchless name of our soon coming king and savior your son jesus christ we stand in awe of you we stand realizing that there is none that can compare with you can dare compare with you and now lord as we listen to your word as we get equipped as we get sharpened oh god this morning i ask that it would please you to apportion abundant spirit double portion of your spirit upon these saints oh god i pray father that an army will exit exodus from here oh god going into our nation to do exploits for you dear father i pray father that will cause this to spill over into other nations oh god into neighboring nations my father into this continent O oh god of all glory and up over the, to the other continents dear lord i thank you that this is a divine moment this is an awesome moment when you are ready to do that which you've been waiting to do for the past so long so we honor you and exalt you and worship you and invite you one more time in this meeting and in this session this is my prayer this morning because I've asked one more time in that much less great name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the saints in the house said with conviction Thank you so much worship team you all look very wonderful don't they Yes, it's a wonderful uniform there. I thank God for you. It is truly such a great honor for me to be here. I've not been to this conference before. I've been to the one that we did virtually in August, but um, the other one at the coast or even in Maseno, I was, I was scheduled for Maseno in April. And you know what happened. All of us know what happened. So I missed that. And then this one, uh, uh, the Mbugwa family were not about to let me go 
So I am here this morning and it's a joy for me to just stand before you saints of God and to minister or to be the vessel, the conduit that God wants to use to revive you. Before, you, before the revival arrives from others, it is reviving us right here. Amen. Somebody say a good amen. 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 And Jesus Christ, the what? The same? Yesterday, today, and so we are going to look at him as he was, and then we'll transfer him into today, and then in the days to come, he will sure be there. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's a good verse to memorize. It's a theme, yeah, but it's a good verse to memorize. Anywhere you are, anytime somebody asks you, uh, tell me a verse of, of, of hand. You should be able to say Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, and then you say it. It's a good one. It makes our Jesus relevant all the way. Hallelujah. We are asking God for a revival in our nation. We are asking God for a revival beyond our nation. Yes. We are asking God to revitalize us in the continent of Africa. We are asking God to go beyond. There are all manner of things around us that are telling us that is not quite attainable. There are all manner of voices that are coming to us. Our eyes are telling us, our ears are telling us, our neighbors are telling us, our colleagues are telling us the world is just in bad shape. But God has chosen you, my dear saint, that you be here to hear a different story, yes. to hear a different, to be given a different energy. And to realize that as he did in the years gone by, because it's the same, he will do for us in our season and in our country. Somebody say a good amen. amen. And so I would like to look at the word revival. And at the same time, bring in that this revival that happened when and when and when will happen. Why? Because Jesus Christ who brought that revival that time is the same that is interested yes. in bringing another revival in our time in Jesus mighty name for an individual you or me on a personal level revival to me I didn't check up in the dictionary but to me I feel like to be revived you have to be consecrated you have to be set apart. You have to realize you are not like the other person. You are not like that one. You are not like even your twin sister or your twin brother. You are separated. You are consecrated, meaning you are put aside for something special, and in this case, something holy, something divine. You revival, a revived person realizes that I am different. I am chosen. I am not like any other. I would like us to read as a text. Uh, Pastor Joan, just remind me, uh, it's now nine something. What, how long do I have? I need to know that. Up to eleven. Okay, okay. Thank you. I would like us to look at the book of um, Jeremiah, chapter one, and verse four, up till ten. The word of God says this to show you how separated you are, how chosen, how consecrated. And so well able to carry out this mission, to carry out, to be the prayer, the person praying for this revival. The word says this in verse, I begin at verse 4, I'll go till verse 10. I may even read 12. 
It says this, the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4. And then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall do what? You shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See? I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Let's just go till 12. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord is saying right here, because the word, the Bible says that the word of the Lord is living. So as it was living for Jeremiah, it's living for you this morning. Amen. And so he's saying he is ready to perform his word. Amen. Everything that you are hearing here for these four or five days that you are here, the Lord's side of the bargain is saying, I am set. Meaning, it's you, maybe, whom he's waiting to get set. And if you are set, then the, the two parties are set, and so the matter should be ratified and done. So the Lord ends this at the ending of this reading that I've uh, done. He says, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Praise the name of the Lord. The verse says in verse number five that, I, I, uh, Jeremiah was sanctified, was consecrated, was separated, was chosen way before he even ever knew. As an individual, before we ask God for a revival, which is collective and on a large scale, as individuals, we have to begin to ask God, to present ourselves before God, to consecrate ourselves before God, to go before God and say, I am I'm willing, I want to, I want to be part of what you're doing in this season of our life, in this season of our being here. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, I will not read, but it can be portrayed. I like New King James Version if it's there. First Peter says, you are a chosen generation, chapter 2 and verse 9 and 10. You are a chosen generation, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, first of all, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light but you are a chosen generation. Amen. Do you know there are many, many, many people in Gong? There are many, many, many people in Nairobi. Many people in Kenya. Yeah. But he has chosen but you and you and you. The few that are here. We are many, yes. But he has chosen you out of the millions for you to be here. So he's saying this morning, you are a chosen generation. You are that one that I have sought for, I've looked for. The East African revival began outside of this nation of Kenya. Began in Uganda, it began in Rwanda, it began to the western part of our country. Where people without a political rally, would just hear and feel like that is for me. 
and lives were being changed and just popping up. The Spirit of God was getting into people and they were accepting and realizing that time had changed at that time in those years. People whose eyes were open to realize that things are no longer the same. This business is not as usual. There is something that we need. There is something that I, the person who was being spoken to by the, by the Lord, whoever it was, because it was a person, it was individuals that were being spoken to. And that voice, that Holy Spirit moved and entered our great nation, Kenya. And because it was coming from the western part of Kenya, the western, western countries on the west part of Kenya, they entered western Kenya. The spirit entered in western Kenya. And at Maseno, and I was tell, uh, telling Reverend Mbugwa that I feel a connection to this ministry. I feel a connection to this movement. I feel a connection to this national prayer group. Because as it came and entered into Kenya, Maseno was the place that embraced and became like a center. Some of you may be come from those ends. It became a center. It became a place where those who were there and those who were near and those who heard about it would congregate there in the, in, in the name of revival, in the name of feeling like I'm, I'm realizing I'm different. I'm realizing something is new to me. I said I feel a connection because I don't come from near there. I wasn't born near there. But I landed, I found myself landing there as somebody's wife there. My husband comes from right in Maseno itself, not near Maseno, in Maseno. And so I feel a connection that this and I was just asking uh, Sister Mary and saying, so how did you choose Maseno? said, we actually never knew it was the place of revival. We just thought it was a good place to have meetings. Only to realize that as God would have it, that that was a place where, many, where the voice of God was so loud that many came and experienced the revival. I was born as a Quaker. There's a denomination called Quaker, or they also call themselves Friends. And the strength of that particular denomination is scripture memorization, memorizing scripture. And so I grew up knowing quite a number of uh, scriptures of head. The weakness of that denomination, now it has changed. But at that time, that is as far as it went. Salvation was never called out. I never grew up to understand what salvation was about. I just thought that you memorize scripture in the New Testament and some in the Old Testament and you pass like an academic something. You, revive, you recite and then that is it and you become a full member of that church. And then I found myself for high school, I found myself at a school, no, where are we? At a school not too far from here, all the way from Western was where I was born. And I found myself at Limuru Girls School. And my father said, oh, did you not have, did you not realize we had some schools this side? Why did you choose to go so far? He was not amused, one, because it was too far. Two, it was a high cost school. And we were not few. The family was not few members that needed that school fees. And so my dad was not amused. And even me, I thought, oh, I wish they had taken me at Loreto Convent, Limuru, next door school. Because there was a lot, a lot, a lot cheaper, at least. At least he would ju then just say it's far, but it's affordable. But now it was far and very expensive. And it is in that school that I came to learn about salvation, that I came to learn about a group that is called Tuk Tenderesa, the revival group. And even at that time, it was still a foreign thing because of upbringing. It was still something that I could not quite identify with. 
But I felt I liked it. I felt it was something good that, uh, that I would like to be part of. When I got to the University of Nairobi, I met a man. I knew him before, but he was just a man or a young man. And he proposed to me. We got married. I found out that his parents, not so much himself, his parents were proper to Kutendere a group now. They were proper revivalists. And they were from Maseno, like I've already said. And there were fellowships that were around them, around my parents-in-law. And a particular man stood out for me from that group of theirs. I call it theirs because I was not too keen to become part. One man stood out. That man has since died. Of course, that generation is going. Now we are the ones on the front line. Me. <laughs> My group. That man stood out. His name is Mr. Limu from Eldoret. Maybe some of you might know him, know the family. I'm saying this to say, as it happened that time, it should happen this time. Amen. There were people who took it upon themselves to stand and say we are pushing for revival, for change from traditionalism, from culture, from things that would make our God not to be the God that we know. I thought this man, I don't know about his family, children and all that, they may not have told the line too much, his children. But for me, I looked at that man and I would just see this is a kind of man that portrays who Jesus is. A very godly man, I would say. A Nandi man from Nandi, from Kapsabed side. Married to a Luya girl, ordinary people. Came to Eldoret to settle. Bought huge, a huge piece of land. I think it was a thousand acres. But if you saw him, if you saw this man, you did not see the big land around him. You saw Jesus around that man. You saw a man who walked with Jesus. Many times, I'm going to bore you with this, but I'm pushing a point. Many times, my husband and I would go visit him and would find he's not there. Why? Because he has gone for evangelism on mission, not in uh, Marquet next door, not in Kitale over the other side, but you would hear that he has gone to Tanga in Tanzania. You would hear that he has gone to Dodoma. You would hear that he has gone to Rwanda you would hear a man, and by this time his age was moving on. But that was not a hindrance at all to this man. There is something that God wants to do with you Amen. that will go beyond your biological understanding of who you are, of what age you are, of what education you have, of what wealth you may have. He just lifts you to another level to experience his kingdom and the way of doing things in his kingdom. This man spoke to me. Let me say revival breaks barriers. Revival breaks barriers. We are looking, we are pushing, we are praying, we are seeking, we are pleading with God for revival that barriers in our nation would be broken. Revival breaks barriers. Revival breaks geographical barriers. And I've just told you that this man would go, would drive himself, my friend, he would drive himself to Tanga in Tanzania all the way from Eldoret. 
and he's 60 something, 70 something years. He would drive himself because there's something different, something powerful, something mighty that takes place when a revived person sets himself on a duty to do praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Revival breaks down, I said breaks down geographical barriers, whether they are boundaries or what. Revival breaks down economical barriers. Hallelujah. Where he was a rich man. Up till now, that land is still there. A thousand acres. But he didn't care about that. He cared about the Savior who found him. In fact, I'm still going on with that. Revival breaks geographical barriers. Revival breaks economic barriers. And I'll come back to the third and the fourth one. But this man, Mr. Limo, says this. He came to Nairobi as a young man. Maybe he was looking for a job or training, I'm not sure. But he came to Nairobi. And he says he was living on the side of Kabete. And he said that he met a, a Kamba man, a man from Cumberland. And this man shared Jesus Christ with him. And he accepted Jesus. A Nandi man comes to Nairobi for training, bumps or meets, whatever the circumstances that were there that caused them to meet. This man, the Spirit of God comes upon him and shares the gospel. And this man receives the gospel and revival begins. He joins or he meets with the revival in his heart. My friend, that is what revival does, breaking down barriers. The other one, the third one is he, revival breaks down bar, denominational barriers. This man is from AIC. And I, would, uh, I told you my parents-in-law were part of this group. I would see all manner of people attending and being part of this revival. It didn't come just for the Anglicans, where my parents-in-law belonged. It didn't just come to the AIC, which is the dominant group in that uh, Rift Valley area. It didn't come. It came to whoever was available and ready to procure. And as the word of God is going forth this morning, I know before me are many denominations represented here. And God is saying because of this unity, because of this oneness, because of this breaking of the barriers that are there that have hindered many people from experiencing revival, because of this, I am coming and coming in my power and in my might. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. The fourth one is revival breaks down barriers that are tribal, tribal barriers. These are things that have inhibited us, that have constrained us, that have made us to, to not to go forth and step in the fullness of revival because certain, we are still attached to certain things. We feel like we cannot go beyond where we are. We cannot go beyond another county. And even me, I was a Christian for many years. And you know that uh, even I was not introduced. You didn't tell people. Some people may not know who I am. But let me just say that I was a bishop's wife. I, I guess I am still a bishop's wife. Yeah. Yeah, I thought when you are retired, you cease, but you don't cease. You become uh, emeritus. So I'm an emeritus bishop's wife. And for a long time, I was... You know, I was in ministry, I was a church person, and I, like I told you, I come from Western, and I would just take that road from Western, Nakuru, and Nairobi. And that is the much that I knew about Kenya. I would go occasionally to Mombasa, maybe for a holiday. I did not understand my own country. It's not until that God has set me free in this season of my life, in this, let me call it a late season that I'm able to go anywhere in this nation, and I say that for a fact. I can go to anywhere in this nation, and I will have a connection there. A connection of a revived person. A person who knows who Jesus is, and knows that Jesus is coming and coming quick. 
So I know that the revival of my soul, of my spirit, not salvation, salvation I had, but just that real, another level, shall I put it that way? That here you are at another, you are born again, yes, that there are many people who are born again. But God is raising you to another level. The revival level is one of seeing things from a very different perspective. Seeing barriers coming down, not seeing barriers standing. And so this geographical for me, and I'm a, I'm a high school geography teacher. And I can tell you, the, the, I can draw for you the map of Kenya with my eyes closed. I can show you where Lake Victoria is and River Tukana and all the rest I can tell you and Lake Tukana. But I knew it only in the head, but not by experience. But since the revival in my soul and in my spirit, God has given me the honor and the privilege to go to so many geographical barriers have been broken down in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Pastor Mbugo and Sister Mary, for thinking of going from the coast right up to the west, that any barriers that there may be, any geographical barriers should be broken in the name of Jesus. Any economic barriers of people who think they are too high to associate with this one because of their economical standing, that those barriers be broken. Those who think that denomination, their denomination is the denomination and others are just denominations, those are broken down. And our biggest vice, our biggest sorrow is one of tribes that you can cross from there. And as you are crossing the country with these conferences, you are breaking down those barriers in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I think why I like that man that I was talking to you about, Mr. Limo, was just his very testimony that I've already told you. Married to Aluya, he himself is Nandi, converted by Akamba and lived in Nairobi where everybody else lives. It's like he took the whole, he was Kenya. He understood what Kenya was. You know what? God is wanting you to understand Kenya. Amen. He wants you to understand your nation. He wants you to stand up and represent your nation. This group, this team here is beyond local rulership. God is lifting you to national rulership. And you cannot be on a national rulership if you think yourself just as on the tribe or in the area or in the region that you come from. Revival calls for separation. Revival calls for consecration. Revival calls for choice vessels, not any odd vessel. It calls for choice vessels. In this conference, and I think I said this statement even in August, I wish to say it again. In this conference, God is lighting fires. Is lighting fires. Not fires as in bad fires, but good fire. Let me put it in singular. God is lighting a fire. God is beginning a new generation. I want us to pray to God for revival with anticipation. Not that you will hear that it has begun in Marquette. Not that you will hear it has begun in, in uh, Mandera. But you will know that it is beginning right where you are. Right where you are. Because there is a fire that is being lit from this conference and in this conference. I also think that I shared this testimony. I would like to share it again. I share it again because it means a lot to me. I share it again because the people who listened in August are not the ones who are listening now. And if they are, they are few, and there are those who didn't hear, so I can repeat it. But that, not that I am a special person, but I have a message that I have brought to you. Many years ago, while still pastoring, while still 
at City Mbali Road. I was, I, I left teaching. I stopped teaching. I took an early retirement. And I thought, let me work and support my husband. At that time, he had become, or he was becoming a bishop. And it was like, maybe a lot. Let me live and come and support. But because I did not understand, that was not my training. That was a new field for me to come and be at a church. Not with, I don't know whether they still use chalk, but for me in my years, we were using chalk and blackboard. That's what I was trained to do. And now I was leaving that to come and counsel people, encourage people, and that kind. I thought it was a big change for me. I thought it was even intimidating because we hear of churches where people say the pastor is okay, but the pastor himself is okay, but the wife is the problem. And I said, God, I cannot leave my career, what I trained for those many years, to come and cause confusion. So I took some time in prayer and in fasting. This is even in my book, I, I wrote it. I took time in prayer and fasting. And when I told my husband that I'm going to take this number of days in prayer and fasting, he looked at me and he thought I had lost it because there were many days. And I was all by myself. It's not like it's a team. You know, when it's a team, you feel a bit encouraged. Yes. But when you are on your own. And I thought, God, somewhere in between, somewhere as I was going on with those many days of prayer and fasting, I thought that God would thunder from heaven. He says that in First Samuel chapter 7 and verse 10. He says, God thundered from heaven. So I thought he would thunder from heaven for me. Like to say, yeah, my daughter, you are actually doing a very good job. <laughs> and heaven was quiet. Heaven was silent. And the days came and the days went. And I was drawing to the end of that session. I was getting like disappointed and feeling like, oh, well, that was, was that a sacrifice worth? But just before a day or two or so. I was asleep at night and God gave me a vision. Call it a vision, call it a, 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 a trance, call it whatever you want to call it, a dream. But I got, I, was, I saw myself coming out of a church like this. And I was going through the, out through the main door. And as I got near the door, I saw a fire in my hands, like I suddenly put my hands together and the, or my hands were made to be put together and there was fire in my hands. And I thought, what is this for? And an impression or a voice or instructed me and said, go out and there are many people out there. It was like after a Sunday service, like people just milling around in the compound before they go off. And I was told, go to as many as you will reach and grant, give them some of these fires because they need that fire that I've given you. I never understood. I never, it was there, it remained, it never went away like many dreams do. And now I look back many years and I see that God was telling me, first of all, I'm going to use you beyond this building. Yes. So you need to get out of this Get out of Sitam. Go out and there are many people needing that fire. Hallelujah. And why the Mbugwas picked on me to be here, I don't know. But one thing that I know, that God said, go and give the fire. Hallelujah. The fire of revival. Hallelujah. The fire of shunning sin. Amen. The fire of having a hatred for wickedness. Yes. The fire of representing Jesus Christ through and through. In the mighty name of Jesus. I thank God for that session of those days that I waited on God. Because it, it's like from that time, I began to see, I began to receive, uh, to receive invitations to go and speak. But I was still confined with the denomination. I was still confined 
to the, 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 the organization that employed my husband. A time came some years later, and my husband too retired from there. And that is when I saw God giving me Kenya. And that Kenya, and that Kenya is not for me, Mama Adoyo alone. He this morning wants to give you your Kenya. He wants to give you your Kenya. He wants to give you your Kenya. Because everybody has their own space. With God's work, there is no scrambling for the same. Everybody has their own space. And God is saying that fire that he gave me those many years ago. God's fire never grows old. I think you need to write that down. God's fire never grows old. God's fire never gets outmoded. His fire is as relevant, as current as we are today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Sometime later, maybe five years after I saw that fire, I had the privilege and the honor to travel to a country in West Africa, Nigeria. Many of us know that country. I was not willing to go. I did not want to go for that conference. But somebody was emphatic and said, just accompany the bishop, don't sit back and all that. And I said it was okay. I went. On getting there the very first day of that conference, the very beginning day on a Monday morning at about 11 o'clock, like almost like now, there was a man who was speaking, he was preaching. He was taking the first session. And then suddenly, the hurricanes, the, uh, uh, I think they call it man, uh, man something winds, strong winds of West Africa, they hit that city, Port Harcourt, not Lagos, not the other one, but Port Harcourt, a, postal, a, a, portal, a, a coastal town, a port. Strong wind hit it. And we were in a stadium. We were in a, an open field, covered, yes, but an open field, a stadium. And I thought, my, my, my. And what if the, the, these walls collapse? They were not permanent walls. And what, it was like a fear came upon me. And the man who was speaking, now I don't even know where he is now, but whenever he spoke, he always carried a globe, a big map with, the, with all the continents on it. And he was up the way I am up. And that man, because of the wind, the strong winds that were, could not continue preaching. He could not continue with his sermon. And so the man left the globe there, and I don't know where he went. But he exited the globe. The, exited the place and left the globe there. And would you know, some of these things happen and for somebody else whose eyes are not open, whose ears are not alert, we just see, yeah, that's happened and so we continue. No. We sat right like where Pastor John is sitting with my husband. And that globe, like under command and direction, a globe means all the six continents are drawn on it. And that globe came like it was being commanded to come right where we were seated with my husband and I. And there was an impression in my spirit. I can't say I heard a voice. But there was an impression that God is saying in this country where great exploits have been done, West Africa, and you from East Africa, the African continent that has been looked down upon. The continent that has been uh, termed to have all manner of problems. If it is HIV Africa, if it is Civil War Africa, if it is which, Ebola Africa, it's a place of problems. And it's like God was telling me, even though man has branded you the dark continent, from today I am beginning to raise you. And not, and not just raise you, but I'm beginning to give you the rest of the continents. And you know, I said, oh, Father, I, am, I think my years do not allow me to deal with other continents. I'm quite happy to serve in Kenya because that is home and it is nearby. But I'm not, and God said, I'm giving you to carry this message. 
and pass it on. It is not for you. It is for you to pass it on. I want to tell someone that as you get revived out of this, you are not going to remain in your little town of, Na of Nanyuki. You are not going to remain in your little town of Kisi. You are not going to remain in your small career as a, a, a nurse in that other place. God is raising you on a national level. And I speak this, I've been speaking this all the time because God told me, whenever I remind you of this, you must tell the people that you are going to. So this revival is not just for you. This revival is not just for your family. This revival is for you to tanga, tangaza to the end of the earth. Somebody say a good amen. amen. Somebody say a better amen. amen. The globe came and stopped right where we are. And God reminded me that I am no respecter of persons. Anyone who fears me, Acts chapter 10 and verse 34, Anyone who fears me, anyone who knows me, I will do for them regardless of their skin, regardless of the color of their skin. I am here to energize somebody. I am here to revitalize someone and to say that as you take on the burden of calling God to bring a revival, he is saying, I am beginning with you to revive you. And you will be the example. You will be the test that people will be looking and say, upon re being revived, this brother, this sister, this family, God raised them to this level. You are not wasting time. You are not in this conference wasting time. You are not missing the Christmas food for nothing. There is a quick answer a quick doing of the Lord that is coming to you earlier than later. Hallelujah. Earlier than later. And because of that, because of the globe, God reminds me and is reminding me, he reminding me even now, those of you that are young people, call yourself young. Even me, in 60 plus, I can say I'm young, depending on who I'm looking at. If she's 90, then I'm young. But all of you are young. Don't limit yourself to this local area. And because of that globe experience, I speak release and command over the entire universe. The Bible says in Psalm 24, the Bible says in Psalm 24 and verse 1, it says, the earth is the Lord's, and all is fullness, the world and those who dwell therein, because he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. We are on this earth belonging to our God. This earth belongs to our God. And God is saying, as he revives you, He's going to revive you so dynamically. Not, not so that when you're walking, people can see that's a dynamic man. But he's going to do things that everybody will see. This man, God has favored him. This man, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I was listening to another, another man about the American politics. This is a Christian man. And he's saying that he, this man was saying he's, um, he's tired, he's like fed up of the evangelical Christians of America. Because they all said that Trump was going to win. And now it's like, so where are you? And he, he, he had his own way of, uh, of um, so he looked at different evangelical personalities. And he said this, which uh, I want to use for this group. He said, when somebody prays for you, and then maybe you had um, sleepless nights. Let's say that's the problem that he's praying for. And then now you go to bed and you sleep. That's a miracle, yes. 
But you know, that's a miracle that only you can verify. Other people looking at you, they cannot see the miracle. He called, he called those type of miracles some name. I've forgotten what that name is. But he said they are also organic miracles. Miracles. Miracles where if a lame man is lame and he begins to walk, everybody sees that. Everybody sees that. So I want to say this. I'm using that to say this. That those of you that will move out of this nation because of the word that is going forth, please let Pastor Mbugwa know. Because that's verifiable. That's verifiable. Let, let, let the word of God be proven. Say that I took the word that came. I walked in it. My, my spirit was revived. Like my spirit was brought back to life. And I saw God working in my favor in this physical and real way. And this is how it, the results. So that testimonies can go up in the name of Jesus. I said, so that testimonies can go up. Because the Bible says this in, um, what's the verse? In Revelation 12 and verse 11. It says, we overcome the enemy by what? By the word of our testimony. By the blood of Jesus, that is ver verified already. But by our testimony. So one that this ministry of revival will not just be oh they felt good or they left or they won't but let there be statistics of what God has said and carried through and now we are testifying about it let's have organic testimonies let me put it that way I think the word was psychomatic psychomatic some word like that things that you can't verify miracles that you can't verify but those that you can verify. And so I'm saying that let this miracle that is taking place, that this woman has come to tell you, this mama has come to tell you and say, I'm releasing you. This revival to go beyond you. Be beyond your, sphere, your current sphere of influence. And take you to another level. Take you to a wider level, a bigger panorama than you have ever imagined. And when that happens... Let it be known. Sometimes I go to America. I, I'm a mother of two daughters. And they went, I send them over there to study. One is in the United States. Another one is in Canada. And, um, you, you know, well, yeah, so I go there uh, um, many times. I forget the point I was saying. Maybe it, when it comes, I'll come back to it. But all the same, God wants to take you places. God wants to raise you to whatever level. And whatever your mind is telling you, that this is the race that I want. You don't have to leave the nation of Kenya for you to be raised. You can be right here and you can be raised in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so may the Lord do to you. Hallelujah. May the Lord do to you as the word has said, as the word has come in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. I want to give you four things, three things that revived people have. Revived people, who you are, of whom you are, and then the revival that will come. Revived people have acquired and have a heavenly language. Revived people acquire, they have a heavenly language. Jeremiah chapter 1, the verse that we read, and verse number 9 says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. God is giving to us the revived people, a new language, a heavenly language. That language is one that you will speak to people. The language you will share, you will speak to people. The language you will communicate with people. 
the language of I can do it. The language of it's possible. The language that says I'm not going there, that's not my area. I'm going on God's side. The language of positivity. Positive. The Bible says this in Psalm 81 and verse 10. Psalm 81, on the same point, a heavenly language. Revive people, receive, acquire, have a heavenly language. Psalm 81 and verse 10. The Bible says this, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You know, that's a, a verse that you hear, the words you hear again and again in the Old Testament, even in the New. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Then it says this, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. I'm here to say, God is granting you a heavenly language. And he's saying, open your mouth wide. And you will feel it to change your vocabulary. To change what you have always thought. Oh, I'm not, I cannot amount to anything. Oh, I'm the youngest. Oh, 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 oh. God is saying a language of positiveness. A language of I can do it. A language with God, nothing is impossible. A language of I am above and not under. A language of I am the first and not the last. Yes. A language, a heavenly language. And this is a language to people. A language that you'll speak to people. This is a season of corona. A season of, uh, they call it COVID-19. Somebody was trying to attach even that word to something. It's a language where everybody's saying, oh, but you know I lost my job. Oh, but you know times are hard. But, but God is raising a different generation. Amen. Oh, I think you're not convinced. God is raising a different generation. Right in this season that is called a difficult season. Open your mouth and he will fill it. He will fill it so that you can go out of here speaking the words of heaven. The language of heaven. God will grant you a language of heaven that you may speak to him in that language. Don't we know Acts chapter 2 and verse 4? Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. The word of the Lord is written and talks about the infilling of the Holy Spirit that you may talk to God. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Listen, God is giving you a new language. A language of heaven. A language of speaking to him direct. A language where nobody can, you know, push you away and say, don't speak your mother tongue. A language that everybody admires. A language that people look at you and they say there's a glow. There is a brilliance on your face. God is saying in this revival, you who is revived, you who is being revived, who is being rejuvenated, who is being revitalized, God is saying I'm granting you a new language a new thing, a new speech, a new tongue, the tongue of the learned, the tongue of the living God. Jeremiah was given that language. The psalmist says, open your mouth wide. Peter writing, or Acts being written, says the spirit of God gave them a new tongue. A new language. Can we come out of here saying revival is coming? Yes. Not it has delayed. Not it might come 2022. Yeah. Revival is here with us. Yes. Let's speak the language of appropriation. Yes. Of putting it in place. Yes. Of having it take place. Yes. Sometimes we may be looking for something this way and maybe it's right here happening. Yes. 
Let's be expectant of what God wants to do. So the first thing, revived people have a heavenly, acquire a heavenly language. Number two, revived people become bold and fearless. Revived people become bold and fearless. God, by his grace, in his might, in his favor, and to us who are gathered here in this auditorium, is creating a bold people, a fearless people, a people who will say, I will stand for my God. I will do that which will please my God, not which will please my political leader over there, not even my pastor, if it is not right. And I would like to underscore that with the, uh, Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 3. Daniel, chapter 3, verse 16 up to 18. We'll also look at Acts, chapter 4, and verse 13. We are looking, we are saying, when you are revived, you, because you are being revived, yes. God is depositing inside you a spirit of boldness, a spirit of courage, a spirit of fearlessness. Let me tell you, these guys who drive around but they are in, with stolen money, they are big cars, or they have uh, swindled someone with their big mansion, those guys, my friend, they have a fear within them. They have a fear of the unknown. But before me, hallelujah, before me, God is depositing inside you a spirit of boldness. You may never stand to address a political rally in Kamkunji, but God is giving you audience and endowing you with a bold spirit, a spirit of boldness, a spirit of fearlessness. Daniel chapter 3. And verse 16 up to 18 says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Remember, they are talking to the president. They are talking to the king. And not the king of one nation. There were 127 provinces. And they are looking at him. The next verse. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. The next. But if not, let it, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set this is the boldness that God is imparting on you. Amen. Saying that anyone will appear with a cheap offer. If you do this, you'll be promoted. If you do this, you'll get that plot. If you do this, you will do this. And God is saying you will stand straight, look straight in the eyes of that person. Get lost with your plot. Get lost with your money. I would rather be this. My God will provide for me. The blessing, the word of God says, the blessings of the Lord make rich and they add no sorrow. Saints in the house, get away from short-lived enjoyment. Short-lived pleasures that have long repercussions, long sorrows, because you've done it the wrong way. You are here and God is saying, I will defend you. I'll be behind you. As you're talking, I'm behind you. I'm pushing you and saying, Dio, get going. The spirit of boldness. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13 says the same. The people of God, the people who know their God. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, in chapter 2 and verse 4, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were 
uneducated and untrained men. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. We are saying, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is saying, I'll back you, my son. He is saying, I will be behind you. These people that were threatening them, threatening the servants of God, God opened their eyes, and the word is saying, they realized. It came to their minds that these guys had been with Jesus. Amen. Which Jesus? The one who was, who is, and who always will be. When you get revived, there's a boldness. The spirit of boldness is put unto you. It doesn't matter who is threatening you. I'm saying it doesn't matter who is threatening you. It doesn't matter who is saying that marriage is falling apart yesterday. It doesn't matter who is saying that job, you will lose it and you will tarmac for the last so long. Uh -huh. This woman has been sent to you. Mm. You say because you have opted to revive you, to be revived by the Almighty God. Yes. Because you have chosen to put aside the sweet things yes. of, of Babylon. Yes. The sweet foods of Babylon. Yes. Says I want to go for this sacrifice. Yes. What the Bible says, God is not unjust. Yes. Hallelujah. God is not unjust yes. to forget. Yes. And I can stand before you with boldness. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. With boldness. Yes. And to tell you that God is faithful to his word. Yes. He's faithful all the way. Yes. He does not stop along the way to begin afresh. Yes. This God will work in your favor. Yes. When I accepted Christ Jesus, I was in form three. I did not understand. But now, as I count, it is 50 years, 5 0. 50 years of serving God in salvation. And I know that the Ada that is speaking you, to you is not the Ada of the, those years. There is a boldness that God has granted, there is a talking that God has granted that I never knew was there. But because the Spirit of God came upon me and say, I want to be different. I want to be separated. I want to be consecrated. I want to be chosen by you, Lord. I want to do that which you want me to do in my season. Because of that, I have proved him. The Bible says this in Titus chapter 2. In verse number 4, it says older women. Sorry, it's about older women. Older women teach younger women. I have a reason. To speak to you that way. Based on the years that I've walked with this Jesus. Based on the age that I am. I have a reason to speak to you and say the boldness that God is giving you. Will take you beyond what your mind can dare to imagine. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the worthy name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar shows up and he says, you boys, I hear. Here you are not willing to bow. And if you don't, I'm going to cut you in pieces and throw you in the fire to be extinguished. And the young men, <laughs> the boldness came upon them. They looked that king in the face and told him what we've just read. We have no business in this matter, O oh king. If he doesn't protect us, even if he doesn't protect us, we will not bow. But we want to quickly let you know that he will not let us down. We will be victors in the name of Jesus. And you know what? The Bible says he got furious. He got furious. Nebuchadnezzar. And he made an order, maybe if it was telephone. He told those guys of the furnace, said, hit it. Put more kuni. Seven times. Even before they land, let them be ash. 
before they learned. And the Hebrew boys, with boldness, they walked towards there. The Bible says strong men came and lifted them and threw them in. And the flame consumed them and left the ones that are inside. My friend, I'm not here to hype you up. I'm here to let you know that you're on the right side. The winning side. And that's why we have the passion to say let more people be revived. To experience what we have experienced. To know what we have known. To do what our God has taught us to do. Revival must come. Beyond us. Revival must attach itself to our family members, to our friends, to our colleagues in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fearless. Fearless. The third one. Revived people persist and remain consistent. They persist, they keep going and they remain consistent. They are consistent. They continue. They keep going. They don't give up. Whether it is COVID or Corona, whether it is job or no job, revived people have a certain degree of energy that does not get depleted. They persist and they are consistent. I like those two words. They, pers they are persistent and they are consistent. So they are not persistent just for a while and then they stop. No, they keep going. They keep going. Luke chapter 22 and verse 28. The word of God tells us this. I'm saying God is giving you a new energy. God is giving you a new strength. God is letting you to move on. You will not tire. In my next session, I'll be sharing how with these years that you can see written on my face, I just keep going. I just keep going. I refuse to give uh, uh, excuse of age. And say, oh, because I am over this, I'm unable to do. Luke 22. Luke 22. In verse 28, the Bible says, But you are those who have continued with me in my trials. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials. John, the book of John, you, you can just go there, please, for me. We'll come back to this one. Uh, but John chapter 6 and verse 66, and you can see those figures. Have you written them? John chapter 6 and verse 66. How does it look? Yeah, 666. It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. We don't belong there. Listen to me. We don't belong there. And let, even if you forget, I, I don't want to say even if you forget everything, but I'm saying this is a verse to remember. Because you don't want to go there. John 666. Six, six. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. But look at Luke. What Luke says, 22, in verse 28. Let's go back. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials all the way at this point in chapter 22 you know Luke ends at chapter 24 so at this point the work Jesus came to do is almost over so he's saying you've walked with me throughout you've been with me all this time he's commending them can I commend you too that you will continue in this revival 
you will not reach somewhere, a young lady who is not married and you are thinking, oh, this one could just do. No, 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 no. You are of a different line altogether. You are of a different lineage. And you will wait on God. You will continue with, with, with him. But you are those who have, this verse has blessed me many a time. That God is looking for people who will continue, who are persistent and consistent. Because you know you can be persistent, persistent, then you get tired and quit. No, persistent and consistent, ongoing, forever going until you get what you are looking for. Jesus at the end is commending his disciples. Because he's remembering John 6, 6, 66. Many had dropped off. Many had gone. Many had said, but these, the 12, continued with him. God is saying, a revived person must persist. Whether corona is, is uh, thundering or not, the thunder of heaven is greater. Whether it is uh, quaking or not, the quaking of heaven is greater. So we stick there. We say it because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. We have a reason therefore to stand upon his promise and wait and do that which he wants us to do. Acts chapter 1 and 21. Acts 1 and 21. I think this will be my final reference. I think Acts chapter 1 and verse 21. Just the same point of consistency. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us, and accompanied, you can put continued, with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. This is when Judas had now left. They were left 11. And Peter suggested that we need to fill the, the betrayers, um, the traitor, his position. We need to fill it. And how do we fill it? We look around and see these ones who have accompanied us, who have continued with us. Who, they were still looking for those traits. Who are the people who have been with us all the time? Who are those who have been coming seasonally? They come and disappear and then they come. They come and disappear and then they come. Listen to me. In this anointing of this conference, in this revival anointing, speak to your spirit and say, I will continue. When the Lord is looking for me, he'll not find I had taken sabbatical. I will continue and I'll be consistent and I'll be a testimony so that the revival takes place. Whatever is required for a revival to take place is sitting right with you. Therefore, these men who have accompanied us who have continued with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and went out with us. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that Jesus is saying, I want to do a work in this team that is here. Amen. He wants to do a new thing, a complete turnaround. And I believe that he wants to do it because he has done in my life. Just as I have prepared this message, I felt a fire of God in my heart telling me I want to stir you up yourself before you can stir others in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now I want us to take this moment to just go before God. First of all, I've talked many things, but one that I will not forget is I want the fire of God to come upon me. I want the fire of God, the fire that will burn through the fire that will keep you, make you cons consistent. The fire that will give you a boldness. The fire that will give you a different language. Not the language of giving up. Why don't I ask you to stand on your feet? Please stand on your feet. Or you can kneel wherever you are. But stand and just go to God seeking for that fire. Number one, fire. Fire. As I get revived... As you revive me, dear Father, give me that fire. Ask God for that fire. Ask God for that fire, that you will carry this fire elsewhere. It will be in your heart, it will be in your life, but it will also go to somebody else. 
Let this fire go to somebody else in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Fire. The fire of God. I'm passing this fire on you. I'm passing this fire on you. I'm passing the fire of heaven. The fire of heaven. Hallelujah. The fire of heaven over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the spirit of the Lord fall on you. Let the spirit of the Lord fall on you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. The next thing I want, the next thing I want as, as far as it is relevant to you, I ask that this revival time, this revival season, before those ones that are outside, you receive this revival. As you receive this revival in your heart and in your soul, I want you to ask God to give you a heavenly language. The language of speaking in tongues and the language of speaking positively, those two. The language of speaking in tongues, that's you talking to God. And the language of positiveness, the words that will come out of your mouth will be words of power, words of encouragement. Lift your hands up, lift your voice, lift your heart before God and ask for a new language. Hallelujah. A language to speaking to God, a language of speaking of people, of you speaking to people in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, it's available for you. It's available. The language is available for you. We are, it's not far away. He has already allowed it to be here. The grace of that language is here in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. A new language. A new language, a new language, oh God, a new language to speak to you, a new language to share with you, a new language to submit to you, a new language to communicate with you, a new language. Father, I thank you. Take me deeper in that language. Give me vocab vocabulary of that language. Oh, give me that language, oh God. Give me a language of bull. Hallelujah. A language, oh God. A language to speak to people. A language of fire in people's souls. When they hear my word. When they hear your word, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name we have asked. Amen and amen. 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 And the next one. Let's ask God for boldness, fearlessness, that God would grant to us that spirit that he gave to the three Hebrew boys. Speaking to Nebuchadnezzar, they said, even if he does not, we will not bow. A boldness to declare what your God can do. Open your mouth and talk to your God about that. In the mighty name of Jesus, let God grant you a spirit of boldness, a spirit of fearlessness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Talk to God. Cry to God. Plead with God. Our God is a God of answer. A God who answers. Hallelujah. The spirit of boldness. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ is the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. 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 In the name. In the name. In the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. 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 Boldness. 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 Grant me boldness, dear Father. Grant me boldness. I will not shake. I will not shake at my boss. I will not shake at my neighbor. I will not shake at a robber. 
In the name of Jesus, you'll give me boldness. You'll give me boldness in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Let's ask God for energy. Energy to persist and energy to be consistent. Let's ask God for energy, strength to be consistent and to persist. Don't give up. Energy not to give up. Ask God. Ask God to do that for you. Lord, give me energy. Give me strength to persist. Give me to persist. I will witness. I will not give up on that man. I will not give up on my colleague. I will witness of salvation. I will witness of the doing of the Lord. I will testify of what he has done for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Persist. Persist. Persist in Jesus' name. Persist. Continue. Continue. I will continue. I will keep going. I'll not drop off. I'll not drop out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ask God to give you consistency. Ask God to give you persistence. Ask God to give you energy. Energy to keep going. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to keep going. Lord, I don't want to give up. Lord, I don't want to turn around in the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's our God. That's my God. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And the last one that I want us to do, I want us to ask God to break every barrier that is making us not to experience the fullness of revival. If there's any barrier, tribal barrier, whatever barrier we did all the four, or denominational, economical, geographical, whatever barrier, even just a fear, ask God to remove that barrier. Whether it is fear even, it can be. Let God come through for you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ask God, ask Jesus. This is my revival meeting. I'm not waiting for them the next year one. This is my revival moment. This is my revival moment. Break down all the walls. Break down the walls, Father. Break down the walls, O oh King. Break down, break down in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let a revival come in my soul. Let a revival come in my life. Let the revival break all the walls that inhibit me in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 King of all glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. We give you praise. We give you worship. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And now, I want to use the globe story and to release you to the ends of the world. Jesus said, beginning in Jerusalem. Some of you, you have been in Jerusalem long enough. It is time you move to Judea. It is time you went to Samaria. And it's time you went to the uttermost parts of the world. I want to release you as you raise your hands that God will send you to that destination, that place that you'll carry the revival fire. Hallelujah. You'll carry the revival fire to the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just see yourself going. See yourself going beyond what you know. Beyond what you know. All barriers being broken. All continental barriers being broken. Corona will not inhibit you. In the name of Jesus, he's taking you to the uttermost parts. He's taking you to the uttermost parts of the world. The uttermost parts of the world. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed, blessed, blessed Redeemer. Blessed King, everlasting Father. Hallelujah. 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 
we can stand in silence now. Let's stand in silence. Like I said, I've spoken many things. But that, there's that one that was yours. And you know that was for me. And you know that was also for me. Whatever was for you, I want to ask God to release his grace, his water, to water that word, to water that persuasion that is in your spirit, that it will grow, it will not die, it will not be in the thorns or on the rocks, but it will be in good soil. And before we know it, the revival conferences will be not in Kenya alone, but will be beyond in the name of Jesus, because you'll be the ambassador the ambassador that has taken that revival over there and over there. And so let's just, before, go before God, I want to release this grace of, of globe, of the globe of just no inhibitions and the realization of what God has said to you this morning. Father God Almighty, oh, our God who is faithful, our God who is mighty, our God who is wonderful, Lord, you see these precious lives that have given themselves to come and seek you. And you spoke and you said, tell them, teach them that as I did for the disciples who continued with me, I will do for them who, have, who are continuing with me. We have Christianity because those 12 men continued to proclaim the gospel. And Lord, we have these 100 plus people that will spread your, the revival that you are beginning. Lord, I thank you that this is not, does not belong to the dying group. Does, belo does not belong to the stagnating group. I speak life. Hallelujah. I speak expansion in this. That Lord, these saints will go and expand. Expand as far as revival is concerned. As far as telling God, God's people what God is saying. I thank you Lord because these are the faithful ones. That you are now saying as per Luke 22, 28. You are saying you are the ones who have continued with me. Lord, I thank you because they are continuing with you. And Lord, I pray that their language will be the language of continuation, the language of consistence and persistence. I thank you because you are doing beyond what I'm asking. I give you praise and I give you honor. Blessed be your name, dear Father. Let's just give the Lord God a round of applause. Let's give a round of applause. Let's give a round of applause. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate our Savior, our friend, our King, the Almighty One of Israel. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed, blessed.